right, what's up guys? We're back. Sorry for the delay. I got I got a little sick, nothing too bad, just a pretty bad head cold and that kind of slowed progress down, but we're back. And in today's episode, we're painting the Supra. To give you a little recap, I bought the Supra over in Japan and then I shipped it back home. It didn't run, but we made it run. And then we repaired all the crash damage and that leaves us here where we are today in a spot where we need to finalize all the body work, kind of, kind of smooth out all the rough edges on this thing and then we can paint it so it's all one color. That's what's in store for today's episode. Stay tuned. All right, we've done a small amount of uh, really tedious work off camera, like taking off bad clear coat, sanding into some of the uh, damaged part of our replacement quarter panel. That's just the last skim coat of body filler and then we're going over that. But we left all the really cool stuff uh, for this episode and to, to show you guys how we get through some of these problems. And a lot of it is pretty unique stuff. So let's get started. Gonna get started here on the C-pillar. So we got the where the old metal is, new metal. We've got this butt join right here. So you wanna have a nice little gap in there that you can fill with weld and the, the thing is, is it's all about heat management. These pieces can warp very easily because there are really tight bends that stretch the metal when they're stamped out from the factory. This is an over 90 bend. That's really, really easy to warp out. So you gotta be really careful. Start with tack weld here, tack weld here, tack weld here, and then you're gonna move and tack right next to it. Once they've kind of cooled down, then you're gonna tack right next to it. And then again, every time it cools, then you can come back and do another pass of three tack welds as far separated as you can manage. Patience, patience, patience. And then when you go to sand it, this is where I've messed up a lot of panels. Gotta be very patient with your sanding too. Maybe even use a little bit of a damp rag, but not too cold of water because you'll shrink the metal. Um, but be very patient when you sand through this because you can generate a lot of heat when sanding that, that weld down and it can actually warp the panel too there. So weld in the gap, sand it all down. I'll show you what it looks like when it's raw metal before we move into body filler. That's what it looks like when it's been all welded and sanded back down. This is plenty good for a body filler. We have a little bit of a low spot right here. So the two butt welds kind of came together low. Low is fine. Obviously you can't go more than a quarter inch thick with body filler, but this is like, you know, an eighth of or a sixteenth or less. Uh, low is better than high. High spots you gotta hammer back down. Low spots, no problem. Just throw some body filler over it. So that's the idea is we're gonna work from about here to down here with body filler and just blend that all out. And then everything else is all good to go. I got that layer of body filler sanded down and then I hit it with primer. When the primer's first on here, it's all really nice, wet and glossy. It's almost like a gray gloss paint. I use that to bounce the light to see all the different angles before the textures start showing up. So now you can really see, oh, it's shinier here, it's more matte here. That gets very confusing to the eye. When it's all nice and wet, you can really, really see all the angles, see it from different ways and make sure that it's all perfectly right. And uh, this looks good, so I'm happy with that. We will sand down that primer with some 600 and then that will be ready to rock. I gotta do the same thing down here. And this quarter panel's finally done. All right, we got that all welded up and then I got a layer of body filler on there and I'm gonna sand the majority of that off except for that there's a little low spot right where the butt weld is. And then I'm gonna hit that with some glazing putty and we'll be done there. I'm gonna move over onto the hood now. I'm really trying not to bore you guys with too much body work here, but there are a few unique situations that I wanna point out how we're gonna handle these and the hood is one of them. This hood we originally got for about 50% off online because there was a little crack in the clear coat here. I just wanted to talk about how I would address that if you wanted to have a carbon fiber exposed hood. Grab a finger file like this, dive into that crack area and sand until the crack is all gone. Then 
order some nice clear resin, mix up your resin and put resin in there, sand any high spots down, again another coat of resin, sand high spots down, blah blah blah, keep coating that up until you have a nice flat surface with this. Then obviously you're going to sand this, you have to blast the whole hood again with a clear coat so it has re uh, UV protection and then you would have a really really nice looking carbon fiber hood. So it's a lot of work but it would save like $500 so it's, it's kind of up to you whether or not it's worth it because if you had to have a body shop spray it with clear trust me it ain't worth it it'll cost too much money um, so we're going to be fixing not only that but just by sanding it and having body filler um, this is our own damage that happened in storage uh, and this is a little not so technical really it's just because you have a gouge and you have a hole that's falling off of a wall here use a piece of tape and build it up to be kind of roughly the right shape and then that'll help hold your body filler in there while you're where you're back filling it in. These were other low spots that we saw in the um, clear coat, the clear gel coat. Um, so what we did is identify them by sanding around them and then we'll put a little bit of glazing putty over that to help uh, take out the wobblies and then we'll sand it all up and it'll be ready to roll. We got the hood done. There's a little bit of glazing putty on the top of this stuff, but once we dust that off, it's done. Instead of putting glazing putty in those low spots, what I did was I actually just grabbed the block sander and there's so much gel coat on this that I was able to sand right through that and make that all nice and flat. So that's good. Moving on to the rear bumper. We got a decent amount of repairs. There's a, a ding here, a ding here, and a ding here, and some scratching. So we'll get that all filled up and scuffed up and cleaned up. Mostly just a lot of cleanup and, and light work on this. When you're working on like a polyurethane or ABS type of bumper, just make sure you use flexible body filler they make it specifically for bumper repairs that's gonna really help your results and then we're also gonna jump into this front bumper this is in pretty good shape right from the factory but there's a few little like small things that we're gonna change and there's unfortunately a low spot in this in this lip right here so we got to fill that into We just finished the final scuff up. So we got the bumper, that's all, all the small little imperfections and everything you can see they've had glazing putty in them and everything's been sanded down. It's really nice and smooth. Carbon fiber is all scuffed, that's why it's no longer shiny. The entire rest of the car is scuffed. We hit this with high filler primer, sanded it back down so it was nice and really, really smooth finish. The bumper repair went really, really well. Same type of deal, we used that flexible bumper body filler and then high fill primer, sanded that down. I'm really happy with how that turned out. So we've got a fully scuffed car now. Some of you guys might remember that we built a paint booth at the other shop. Well, I still have that shop. That's where we're eventually moving back to. Actually, not too long from now, no, end of November, we gotta move back there. Um, and we're in the process of construction on our uh, final shop, I'll call it, our big shop. It's not bigger than this, but at least we'll own it. So anyways, we're using our paint booth, um, which means we gotta get this thing out of here. So we're gonna load it onto the trailer, take it back to the other shop. See you in the paint booth. Hi right, guys, this place looks a little familiar. We're back in the OG paint booth here. Uh, we've got all the parts in here. We're gonna paint up most of these parts that are black, so they're gonna go primer, base coat, clear coat uh, before we do the car. So we've got all the different parts all set up and ready and we're just finishing uh, cleaning work on the rear hatch. Now I wanna talk to you guys about our new spray system. So Harbor Freight, our great friends at Harbor Freight sent us basically a, a new painting setup. So we're gonna try painting with compressed air once again. And um, they've got some really new fun guns and stuff that I really wanted to try out. So this one is an HTE gun. Uh, it's different than the HVLP and that's the 1.3 mil, mil tip. So I'm gonna be spraying, this is their new Spectrum line. It's pretty new to me. I don't know how long it's been out on the market, but I've seen great reviews on YouTube and I'm really excited to try this gun. So this thing is a 1.3 nozzle. So that's for base coat, clear coat. And then we have the Spectrum HVLP with a 1.7 mil nozzle and that's for our primer. And they hooked us up with like everything from, from hoses. Uh, we've got some air cleaners there. I actually bought those a while back, but we've got hoses, an air compressor I'm gonna show you, new guns and um, respirators, air filters on the guns. And this is really cool. This is their new paint system. So they've, they've had a disposable paint system for a long time that I used like five years ago, six years ago. Worked great, but they've really upgraded it now. So this is like the cup, 
and then the end piece and it has the internal and the cup has all the measuring on it and then this little lock ring. So basically your internal pieces are disposable and so it's like this piece and an end nozzle is disposable and then you keep the cup and the ring. It's super, super awesome and it makes paint jobs go by a lot faster when you can just chuck that stuff in the trash and then clean your gun out and you're done. I love it. So we've got a bunch of stuff. They've got, they sent me so much stuff. It's so awesome. Let me show you the air compressor. This is the new Fortress air compressor system that they sent out to us. It's like 26 gallons. It's really, really quiet. It does 4.5 SCFM and 1.7 horsepower. So this isn't enough to do DIY automotive painting on your own, but we tied it with our other air compressor and with the two combined, we're like overkilling it. So big thanks to Harbor Freight for always hooking us up. I'll put some links to those new paint guns in the description if you guys want to check them out. So uh, we're almost set up here. If you guys want to know kind of the ins and outs of, of how to paint, um, I would say watch some of the videos like the GTR painting process or the BMW 335i. We probably went in pretty in depth on that too. Um, but basically clean everything very, very good. Wax and grease remover, wet the floors, get the dust out of your situation, and then we're going for primer. the next morning and you know we have that phrase here it wouldn't be a beast for build paint job if we got it right on the first try so I made sure not to now actually not really big mistakes but mistakes were made so the primer went on really nicely and for the most part our body work that we focused on was really really good and I was happy with that but some of the body work spots that I guess we failed to see um, showed some pitting and that stuff is like some of these are way too big to just paint over so I knew I needed to stop and fix those and then also when spraying primer uh, I, I don't do a lot of primer and I think that two issues one is I, I'm not sure if I bought the right type of primer for what I was trying to do, which was basically just do a quick color change on the base of these, turn them from black to more silver so the base coat would uh, cover evenly. And the other thing is I don't think I painted it on wet enough. So in some spots, we got a little bit of like, a little bit of texture. Actually, this piece is pretty dang good, so I'm not seeing any. But in some spots, we got a little bit of like dry texture. You can almost hear it here with my hand. And that could that can be overspray from the gun. Say I was spraying up here and it oversprayed down here, whatever. And um, that texture is enough to put the orange peel into the paint. Japanese cars don't have a lot of orange peel, uh, so we really gotta make sure we don't have that. And we wanna have a really, really smooth finish. So this is really easy though. I mean, primer is meant to be sanded on. That's most of the reason people use it is a finish coat to sand down. So that's all we gotta do now. So easy, easy fix. We're gonna grab 400 and 600 grit sandpaper and um, sand down all this primer so it's nice and perfectly smooth and then fix any little pits. The primer really helps show you the pits uh, that are in your pieces. So we're gonna fix those up too and then we're ready for base coat. Real quick, I wanna take a quick second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by ShipStation. ShipStation is an online, all-in-one platform that just helps sh absolutely streamline your logistics and shipping part of your business. When I started selling merch, everything ramped up really, really fast. I went from a few key tags to selling absolutely everything, and I can tell you it's a lot better to be set up and prepared ahead of time. Also, we're creeping up on those really, really busy shipping season, and now is the time to get prepared. It's so much easier to do it now than when you're overwhelmed with tons of orders. And ShipStation just makes stuff easier to maintain and the season is coming up for online shopping and you're gonna get tons of orders in from all different places and ShipStation puts those all into one platform. So it's easy to manage, it's easy to maintain. That means no longer limiting your business to one platform. ShipStation integrates with a ton of different online sellers like Amazon, eBay, Etsy, Shopify, and your own website. So you can maximize your sales with minimum effort. One of the things that I personally love was the great shipping rates. So they have, they, they offer you the same shipping rates that the Fortune 500 companies get, which is amazing, but then also the automation. Automation 
totally saved me because you can figure out the best shipping rate and automate that task so you know the packaging, the weight, the everything per item. It's amazing. And that's why over 130,000 companies use ShipStation and 98% of companies use ShipStation for life. It's that good. So ship more and grow more with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com slash B is for build and sign up for the free 60 day trial. Start today and get set up before the biggest shipping season of the year. That's two months free. Visit ShipStation.com slash B is for build. It's on the screen right here and it's at the top of the description. Go hit it, go check it out. Thank you to ShipStation. Let's get back to work. All right, we got the base coat on. Let me show you some of these parts. Really, really good looking. You can notice there's no like tiger striping or anything like that on the hood. That's always a real big challenge with silvers. The parts are all looking really, really nice. So uh, the gun is working phenomenally. It's now time to move on to the clear coat. We're gonna be doing two coats of clear. First one kind of light, second one as heavy as I can go without getting runs. And we're gonna call it good on these parts. Hopefully this will look really nice. Also, we're doing really good with keeping the amount of dust and particulate out of the air. I'm really happy about that. So we don't have any imperfections in our surfaces, which is really, really cool. Paint booth is doing its job. Next day, and we have beautimous silver parts. This uh, that that gun is really really good, but I found out it does really kind of chuck out the paint, so I had to dial it back a little bit. And then we got like really good atomization, really good clear on everything. I'm super happy with the way this turned out. The booth is working really good. I say that right as I come over to the one bug that we got. And out of all the parts, we got one bug in here. But as I bounce the light. <laughs> it's like the bug and I think its wing is over here and stuff. Sometimes they die over here and crawl over to here. But anyways, as I bounce the light off of these pieces, you can really see that we don't have a lot of dust nibs in anything. We have a good clear. Um, we got a good buildup of clear and that's all that we really need because with that you can wet sand into anything. If you got enough clear on your parts, you can wet sand into anything and really uh, get that mirror finish. But the, the clear finish is, is really nice. This is clear with carbon fiber exposed. Super, super cool. Looks really, really good. So I'm very happy with how all these parts turned out. If we can get the car to this same quality, it's gonna be a really, really successful paint job. Now we're fighting with some temperatures. When you paint all of your all of your mixing and your solvents and stuff, they, they have different temperatures where they're happy at and happy to spray at. Today's kind of a weird day in Oregon where we're gonna get to 90 degrees and you can't really paint at 90 degrees. Uh, my friends that are professional painters just said don't even do anything over 80. So we've got a very short amount of time, so I'm just gonna be kicking on the cameras and letting it roll. Uh, but basically, we gotta get the car in here, base coat, clear coat, and we're done for the day. So let's try and get it good. Nail this paint job. I'd be so happy if this all comes out the same. Like, it'd be great. Ta-da! We have a painted Supra. We've given it a little bit of time to off gas. We forgot to pull the masking off in time, so that's the job now. Let's get all this masking off. You should pull the masking off when the paint is like tacky, um, so you don't accidentally pull the paint back with the masking, but you know, uh, mistakes get made all the time here, so.
right, we are unmasked. It didn't cause any issues, uh, our, our late mask removal. I did make one massive mistake, which is this epic sized run, basically from here, a little bit through here, and then all through here. Now, runs suck, but they can be sanded out of the clear. Not having enough clear buildup, that's a real problem because you can't just like add more. So I went heavy, brand new gun for me, pretty much new system, got some runs throughout this quarter panel and right here. We'll be sanding those off in the next episode and showing you guys how to like clean those up if you run into them. But the rest of it is nice and glassy looking. So that's cool. Now we got our other parts um, that have been drying up in the front lawn. We're gonna go ahead and pull those out and get them on the front. Look at that. I'm so happy with the hood and how the hood came out and everything because I was, I was kind of thinking about doing black on the inside, but I really, really like the silver vents. And the paint job came out amazing. Like this is going to take a little bit of touch up work, but it's really, really good. And damn, this car's already looking really good. I can't wait till we do final assembly. That was really good. So Harbor Freight paint setup. Thanks to Harbor Freight. This is the gun that we were using. The Spectrum HTE really did the trick for us. Now I am by no means a professional painter, but that made an amateur painter be able to paint a car. So there's that. And like I said, it's super cool to see it all one color, but I still think that I really want to wrap this thing and have it be like a super unique color. So I've seen your guys' comments. It's definitely going to be one that you guys like. But in the next episode, we got to go for some more power. We're going to do a single turbo conversion. That'll be in the next episode. We'll show you guys through the whole install and then we're going to dyno test it to prove out that power gains. Thank you so much for watching. Thanks for subscribing so you don't miss anything. And we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.